to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. What does productivity involve? Let's discuss this quickly. Number one, the first key to productivity is healthy exposure. Write it down. The first key to productivity is exposure. Please, whether you are standing outside, whether what, if you can listen, listen. If you can write, write. What's the first key? It's impossible to be productive until your mindset is stimulated by a new horizon to life, to God, whatever it is. I was blessed by the testimony of that gentleman. One testimony you were all laughing around. When the guy was doing his best to articulate and piece together every spiritual intelligence. You, you, you can see the, don't feel bad my friend, but you can see the scarceness of his revelation and access. You can see that he's just throwing anything spiritual. But he said, I want to start from that kindergarten. Give that gentleman two, three months under the correct atmosphere and you will watch a young man rise that will surprise you. You will forget that he was once the person who just came and spoke here. Productivity. Productivity. Anything that enters your hand multiplies. Anything that comes around your life increases. Are we together now? Everybody say exposure. Listen to me. Exposure is not a gift of the spirit. In fact, exposure is not even a gift of life at all. Exposure is a system where your horizon is expanded. Listen carefully. You will never rise beyond your mindset. I hope you know that. Zaria, hear me. Hear me. Hear me. This is one of the secrets of our limitation. We are limited. We are not bad. We are just limited. That all your life, you have known life to be a particular way. And so you do not know there is more to life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Most people, their exposure is negative. Party and all of that. That's, not, that's why I said healthy exposure. That means there's an unhealthy one. Listen to me. If God wants to lift you and cause you to be productive, the first miracle that happens to your life is he can either shift you geographically or give you access to an environment that begins to expand your understanding. He will introduce a person he will introduce a system or he will translocate you to a region where your mind begins to be adjusted. Listen to me. That's why sometimes you receive miracles you know you didn't pray for. God is breaking that cycle of limitation. There is no basis for receiving when you can. There are many people who cannot, God cannot even tell them certain things. It's not yet a concept that can be received. They don't have a system built within them to receive it. Please listen very carefully. Exposure. I believe is one of the reasons why the knot is very backward. I believe is one of the reasons why the middle belt is the worst part of it. Because our entire family, supported by a lopsided communication of Christianity, has stabilized our mediocrity and kept us within a plane that doesn't even make allowance for growth. Listen to what I'm telling you. The average middle belter, the average northerner, has an extra project to do in trusting God to break that circle first. Because it is so bad that the slightest show of exposure can even be attacked as extravagance. This is how bad this spirit is. 
exposure 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 the ability to expose you when God finds out that there is nothing around you that can relate to it he would translate you to the realm of the spirit and say still see in any case I need you to comprehend that's what he did to Abraham. He kept telling Abraham, you will be a father of many nations. Abraham said, amen, like we're saying. And God said, I can't work with you. You are, you are empowering delay in your life. And then one time he said, Abraham, come out. You have checked around and there is nothing that looks like. Lift up your eyes. See. Count the stars. He had been looking at the stars, but he never tried counting them. I'm looking for something I can use to, to, to parallel what I want to do in your life. So count the stars. So he will start one, two, three, oh God. One, two, three, four, five. Ah, one, God is impossible. That's it. He says, so shall your seed be. I, I have I've planted something in you that you can now relate with. He says, and Abraham finally believed God and it was credited to him for righteousness many times we do not have a basis for being blessed because we are limited we came from a poor background now i'm not insulting you please you are born to look like your parents but you die looking like your decisions listen carefully i understand that you came from a background that may not allow you to rise but somewhere along your life, you must make up your mind. Unfortunately, many of us make up our minds in an unhealthy way. You just sit and say, this poverty, I'm tired. I must start hustling. You have missed it again. Hmm. Exposure. So, the young carpenter from Galilee. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And every time he went to pray, his horizons were expanding. You see what Satan did to Jesus? He took him to an exceeding high mountain and said, you have not seen this one, at least not in the flesh. He says, look at it first. Let me expand your mind. Good marketer. When he saw everything, he said, let me make this work easy. It was only a temptation because of what Jesus saw. If Jesus did not see anything, it can be a temptation. Are you getting what I'm teaching you tonight? Everybody say exposure. It is the reason why there is a lot of advancement and there is ease of establishment in areas like say Abuja or Lagos and all of that. Do you know why? Because the environment, sociologically speaking and infrastructurally speaking, is developed enough to subconsciously stimulate creativity. So you are passing and there's a mall that challenges you. And then they tell you this is a young man that owns it. And subconsciously, your mind continues to bank in challenges until you don't know when you sit down and say, Lord, there has to be something about my life. But in this environment, no matter what level you are, you are still a champion. You see how bad it is? Before or after school, you are still better than many people. Before or after being born again, you are better than many people. You waste your money. They say, no problem. You are better than us. There is nothing that challenges you. So you need a healthy exposure. There are people in their life who never bought cars. And the day you say, we are trusting God for a car, they look at you and say, what, what kind of nonsense is this? Must you live with a car? No, you mustn't, but it's better to have a car. Are we together now? Yes. Listen, one of the ways that Satan destroys men is to allow your mediocrity to reach the apex. Then he will now, in, he will expose you by himself. That's why you can have a naive lady who never understood anything about life and a young guy can just come and carry her and say, my dear, let me tell you what this is. Let's go to a very big hotel or somewhere and she gets to eat a nice one and say, what is this? This is called this. This is called that. She doesn't know she's getting angry until she leaves that hotel and returns back home. And the mother says, sir, it's ready. Help me pour water on the firewood. Let, let's just conserve it. And suddenly there is an agitation. But because it was wrongly done, she will make up her mind that that experience, I will not rest. She will find a way of going back. Nobody sees something better and rests. 
when new wine comes something begins to happen the old wine becomes tasteless is how God expands us many of us have never seen the advantage of living a blessed life you have never really seen a blessed godly person around you please look up look up look up look up don't don't feel insulted but many of us have not had models of correct blessed believers you have seen struggling believers you have seen believers here and there who are a bit they have today tomorrow they don't have you have not seen a portrait so when the bible says blessed is the man that fears the lord there's nothing you can you just you just think he says godly is the man you know how your phone doesn't have some characters and when you send text messages it will use something else to replace it my brothers and my sisters the mind only begins to conceive when there is a reference there has to be something that's the reason why men and women of God must challenge themselves even on this wise to become worthy references a ministry that has a prophet will easily have prophets as members because they can see a man prophesy a ministry that has a millionaire will usually have people the possibility that you see before you is what you become that's what Jacob did to the animals he simulated what he wanted them to become are you getting what I'm saying now many of you have not seen the excellency of a blessed life the only thing you have heard about a blessed man rich men are crooks rich men are stupid rich men are obsessed with money they are the ones who destroy our country rich men are corrupt people and when you hear that kind of thing your mind has pegged that as the definition of wealth so God exposes you to a man who is blessed and loves God and you are seeing a reality that is foreign to your experience i thought all wealthy people hate god i thought all wealthy people are indisciplined crooks here i'm seeing a man that loves god then you have the opportunity to see his offering you have the opportunity to see his tithe you have the opportunity to see his prayer and in it his righteousness endures he will leave you with a mark you will go back and say mama i know we are in this hut but there is a better life egypt i know there's cocoon and there's carrots but there is Canaan mama there is Canaan let's trust God for grace and in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to you may you be the one to lift your family out of this land. please sit down exposure exposure creates dissatisfaction in your heart are we together you never knew that it was possible to pay a child's school fees beforehand because every time they paid your school fees you were the last you never knew that it is possible for somebody to not worry about money it's not a reality that your mind can ever try to conceive that there is such a realm where you sit down and the only thing that governs your appetite is the will of God not luck Do you know and do you believe there is such a realm? Please listen to me. Such a realm where you are empowered to be a blessing. You get to a church and you see them struggling. Rain is hitting everyone. And you can just sign a check and say, please get canopies for these people. Let the name of the Lord continually be exalted. Let this not be what would discourage them. Your resources increasing even as your soul prospers. You cannot be productive until you see the advantage. There must be a system of recognition. You must see what it can do to you. Are we together? I never had the privilege to be around extremely wealthy people, just like most of us. Here and there, we had average people. Some of us came from families that were average here and there. But extreme levels of wealth. Notice that this is one of the reasons why many of us our educational background is very poor till today we are still fighting that warfare let me tell you where it started from it started because of the kinds of nursery and primary schools we went to you went to a school that you sat on stone now i'm not insulting you are we together yes a school where they teach in another language and they translate to you in whatever language you can know because that's what is obtainable are we together how you pass your jersey 
is now that you know it was mercy and favor because you were certainly not ready now let me tell you if you come from that kind of background you will be surprised the first thing you have to manage is complex not assimilation the moment you find yourself in the company of other people their confidence will intimidate you you will have to fail for a long time before you start building your own assignment at that point is not even to understand what they are teaching to manage your complex just a question they ask you stand up and you cannot say your name again you don't fail because you are bad you fail because there is a backlog of something you are dealing with exposure is powerful exposure is powerful the same way you grew spiritually because you were exposed to people who God had helped are you seeing that when this ministry started by the grace of God there were so many spiritual people someone would get born again in two weeks two weeks when everybody is fasting you won't have the grace to complain when everybody is praying you won't have the grace to be lazy when there are programs and everybody is praying through the night you will easily follow suit is that true We are products of our environment. So God needs to grant us access to exposure. Now listen, I want to say something and please let it not hurt you. If for any reason you come from a polygamous family or any kind of family for that matter that did not model correct fatherhood, correct motherhood, correct brotherly love, you have an extra project to do on yourself to trust God for grace. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me tell you this. Now, I love my father. I love him with all my heart and thank God for what he has become now. I say this respectfully. He's still alive, so I'm saying it very cautiously. But I love him, but I do not model his system of fatherhood, especially in his youth. That's because his own father died when he was 10 years. So he spent his entire life hustling. He grew up a bit with his uncle who was a soldier. He was a what? A military man. So what do you think? His whole template was warfare and aggression. That was what he termed progress. And now, we happen to be the ones in the scene. And it was terrible. Especially being the first son. It was, it was a tug of war. It was almost like fight. To fight between myself and my father. Everything was aggression. You bring cold water for him to wash his hand. He won't say you are wrong. He will slap you. You fall with the whole thing. Then you go to the kitchen and ask somebody they slapped before. How did you manage that situation? Now please, don't you ever see my father. And my father is a born again loving man right now. He's a healthy and wonderful man. Are we together now? Yes, I respect and I honor him with my life and forever. So don't, don't think that, honor your father. I'm not just, he's, a, he's truly a good man. One of the most honest people I've seen in my life. But he was a victim. I have learned by experience that the concept of being bad does not really exist. Everybody is only an executor of his understanding. Because there is no bad dead body and there's no good dead body. There's only a dead body. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? And so that life of aggression, exposure. I didn't want it, but that was all I had seen. And so subconsciously as I started growing, I found out that my approach to life began to reflect that. You don't receive willingly alone. Once you are exposed to a system for a long time, it becomes all you know. That's why most people that complain about leaders, when they get there, they do the same thing. Because while they were complaining, they were becoming it too. Remember Animal Farm? Literature students. That's exactly what happens to people. And so my life started reflecting that. I was unusually aggressive. I said, no, 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 no. Something has to happen to my life. Lord, this cannot be my life. Ah, Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. He 
it's amazing to what degree we reflect the things that modeled our minds whether you like it or not is a different thing respectfully speaking if your mother was a cook and you saw her stealing daddy's money and called it smartness you will be surprised what you do when you enter a relationship you can finish praying in tongues right now and while you are praying you just see 1000 protruding from a trouser and you would drag it and drag it in the name of the Lord you are a victim everybody say exposure Zaria people listen to me the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitations of our territory I repeat the internet is God's symbol of mercy to the limitation that comes with our territory there are things we may never have seen and known but for the power of the internet the internet is like a gun you can use it to destroy yourself or you can use it to build many of us it is the power of the internet that gave us access to messages to people to dimensions are we together now just like some of us is the internet that destroyed us and planted wrong seeds in our minds you can remedy for your lack of exposure if it is costly to fly physically let your mind go there listen carefully the most important ingredient in your exposure is not your body it's your mind so when your body cannot get there don't feel bad find a way of taking your mind to that location and this is where the internet becomes a blessing you don't have the privilege to attend a pastor's conference somewhere to bless your, your, yourself, but your mind can go there. Remember, I've taught you that when your mind gets somewhere, your body must follow. It doesn't matter what the resistance is. Yes, you don't have the privilege to have been born in Lagos. You don't have the privilege to have been born in the U.S. You don't have the privilege to have been born in any of the Western worlds. Apostle, I don't even know the name of my village. The last time I checked, I didn't exactly see it there. That's not the issue. Your body may not be able to go there, but God has orchestrated such that your mind can go there. Everybody around you was a bad father, a wicked man, a bad mother, a wicked woman. And God can just lead you to one 15-minute video on YouTube that translates you into the home of somebody who can re-mentor you and start correcting your wrong ideologies everybody say exposure there's no excuse in our world today for remaining small even financially there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure there is a system of exposure are we together Number two, thank you. The second key to productivity, please write it down, is creativity and innovation. Creativity and innovation. The second key to productivity. Remember I told you productivity is a weapon. You don't just fight by prayer alone. You don't just fight by fasting alone. Your productivity is a weapon. As God is exposing you and exposing your mind, you are fighting a warfare that you do not know. It's a warfare for your destiny. While you are exposing yourself, you are exposing it for your children, for your children's children. And then number two, creativity. Write this down. What is creativity? Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, imaginations, and dreams into reality. Creativity is the act of turning or transforming your ideas, your imaginations, and your dreams into reality. Hmm. I saw this definition and it was so instructive. It also involves the act of turning your, um, transforming your ideas, imagination, dreams into reality. Full stop. It also involves perceiving the world in new ways, comma, finding hidden patterns and making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. It involves perceiving the world in new ways, finding hidden patterns, 
making connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena. Look up, please. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the Bible was not as a revealer, but as a creator. There was darkness. Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then verse 2 says, now the earth was dark and void and formless. Is the Hebrew word tohu abohu, confusion and chaos. And the Bible says the spirit of God hovered round the face of the waters because creation, recreation was about to start. The first manifestation of the Holy Spirit was as a creative spirit. And listen to me, if you will conquer the king of Tyre and if you will go up the mountain to bring wood and build the house of God, then you must be creative. The spirit of invention, the grace that can bet realities from the realm of the spirit. Please hear me. Any man that is not creative in this generation will die of hunger or be at the mercy of those who are creators. There is no reason for competition again. Creation is the key. The ability to translate possibilities from the realm of the spirit. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The Bible says, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask or imagine. The word there is imagine. It says, according to the power that worketh in us. Creativity. Unfortunately, our generation of young people have been stimulated into mental sleep. Our creativity level in this generation is almost zero. Thank God for the curriculum they used to bring those days in primary school. Quantitative reasoning. And uh, what's the other one? Verbal reasoning. This, our lazy generation now doesn't even understand anything that stimulates the mind. I'm not being insultive, but you ask a graduate a simple question, just something he can think about. I mean, it's not there at all. Creativity is zero. Zero. So we like doing things the way everybody has done. You just carry somebody's project and change your name and adjust figures, change five to seven, change this to, and change address and stamp it straight to community market and present it. Creativity is zero. Many businesses. That's why when a business is wrong, many other businesses become wrong too because they don't think. They just copy. You must trust God for the grace. Listen to me. There is a level of creativity that can come upon you and bail your family forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yes. There is a spirit in man. Man is not an empty body. There is a spirit and the inspiration, that's the word, from the word inspire. The word inspire does not just mean to prime. It means to magnetize, like you bring a magnet close to something and you cause another metal to shift because of a magnet. That's the idea of inspiration. That the Holy Spirit, the author of wisdom can come close to you. And in physics, we call it resonance. Let, let's, let's talk a little physics more. Resonance. Are we together now? Yes. That when you use a tuning fork and you hit at a frequency, every other object within that frequency begins to resonate. That's how it is. So the spirit of God comes and he does something to your spirit man and lifts you. He wants you to bet something. So he comes in that dimension and deep calls on to deep you are seated in the room there has to be a way lord my family cannot just i i listen listen i don't mean to be a prophet of doom but let me tell you this robots are here to stay that means jobs are already jobs are becoming like typewriter did you hear what i said jobs are becoming like what typewriter Let's speak economics a little. Hear me. I'm speaking to you by the spirit of God. I'm speaking in the spirit of Noah. Telling you a flood is coming. Join this ark and join it fast. 
They laughed at Noah for 120 years. He kept telling them a flood is coming. There are more graduates in Nigeria than any level of development between now and the next 50 years can ever employ. Are we together? Masters is the new degree right now. You don't move around that you have a degree. Masters is the new, you go, they apply to a job looking for 80 people and about 12,000 people will write it. There are people who have finished since 15 years ago. They will eat first before it gets to your turn. So if you're a fresh graduate now, imagine that until 15 or 14 years, Babylon manipulating the system to make sure the saints cry, but there is a way, there is a spirit in man. Listen to me carefully. The, the employment in any nation is private sector driven. There is no nation that the government handles their employment. No. Government has only limited parastatal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And because they are working on cutting costs, usually they will make sure that as much as possible they cut costs. The employment rate in any nation is private sector driven. That means the more businesses you have, the more entrepreneurs you have, then they can be able to absorb people. Unfortunately, technology and information has replaced men. There is no reason why I should employ 1,000 people when I can employ five people and five computers. 737 of GT Bank alone made sure it blessed people one of their most successful products but with that many people may never get a job again because it was very efficient every businessman does business for profit i hope you know bank is business bank is not government property is somebody's business look at graduates now all around there is nothing because there is a system and please listen to what i'm saying because when a father does not have something that brings resources and mother does not have something that brings resources they will both suffer and the children will suffer listen for the sake of your children my brothers and my sisters don't listen just for yourself let us read ourselves of this selfishness it doesn't matter it doesn't take very long before your child comes and then the reality will dawn on you and while that is happening, Satan is manipulating the economy to make sure the prices of things go high. It's a double-edged sword. So that whatever direction you come from, you will be attacked. Listen. The average salary within this system is not more than twenty to 30000 Listen carefully. Am I telling the truth? There are only few places that can employ people in Zaria. Let me use Zaria. I'm talking to the whole world, but please permit my bias. Let me just address my people a little bit. The average salary is 20 to 30,000. Anything more than that is uh, until you have any federal government thing. And we know no matter how careful you are in this life, 20 to 30,000 will not do you anything. No matter how stingy and greedy and even wicked, 20,000 will not be enough. Even if you are a thief, you will need more than that to steal. Calculate the amount to buy weapons, dress, and it's more than that already. So no matter how you go around it, you are still in trouble by default. Now watch this. So you have a family of 10 people. How many people? Minus father or mother. And then one person out of the six graduates now manages to get a job of 20,000 and everybody saying, oh yeah, oh, now that God has blessed you, we were there for you. 20,000 divided by 10. So why won't your prayer life be affected? Why will you be able to pray? Where will you get the resources to marry? No, not marry. <laughs> Watch this. Where will you get the resources to marry? I'm, not, I'm being sincere with you. Marriage in Nigeria at any level is not cheap. Are, are we together now? 
Don't blackmail any territory. Marriage everywhere today is not cheap. You want to marry. You are discouraged yourself. The wife is discouraged herself. Your destiny is, is hanging in the balance. Because nothing... Remember you are born again. Remember you are filled with the spirit of God. And Satan says exactly, this is how I want to manipulate the economy. Please listen, my brothers and sisters. I'm telling you this thing to bail you out so that you will have time. By the time this happens, members are not able to bring offerings, not able to bring tithe, and that means that projects cannot be executed and the man of God himself is stranded. So he has to invent another ungodly way. Are you getting it now? By manipulation. Remember, he didn't plan to be bad. The pressure... The rent on the auditorium. The rent on all of this. There are bills to pay. TV ministry. And he has to invent another theology that can supply. The solution, and I speak to you by the spirit of prophecy, is creativity. Listen to me. Creativity and innovation. There is a spirit in man. Kavaratusia. My brothers and sisters, there is a spirit in man. There are men and women that must arise. Let us not pray in tongues for nothing. We are not just praying in tongues to throw one another on the ground. The world does not understand that language. The language that conquers Babylon is bringing something that dumbfounds principalities and powers. Even Paul got to a place where it was his being a Pharisee his exceptional quality of knowledge that bailed him out. Right now, everybody laughs at the church because it looks like the church is a place for daft people and idiots. People who don't have any brain. Is that true? The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of prayer. The spirit of revival is not only the spirit of fasting. The spirit of revival is the grace for witty inventions on common manifestations of the hand of God. Listen, let me tell you this. Listen to me. Let me say this, and I, I, I don't know if I will sound proud, but please forgive me. Forgive me. When I started banking, I was taught that there are certain transactions you cannot do until you are there by yourself to sign your signature. As God increased me, I found out that it's not true. That rule was only for some people. Are you getting the point now? There are transactions today that I do that the bank manager himself is the one that does it. Now listen very carefully. I'm not saying this to boast. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling you when you are at the edge of creativity, there are rules that will be broken for you and your children. I told you about BVN. I didn't have the time to do BVN. I needed to do BVN in the bank and the, you know the queue. I told them, I said, I don't have this time. And they gave me time, 8.30. I went to the bank and they opened the bank for me. I sat down and did BVN. Is there anything, sir? Would you, are you happy? Would you like a drink? I said, ah, look at how unfair life can be. Listen to me. This is not some boasting or bragging. I want you to be apostolic in your understanding. This is not about money at all. This is about your soul and the gospel. Are we together now? Yes. Let us not keep our children in captivity, my brothers and my sisters. Standing between your parents and your children is you. We are that bridge. You can transfer what you received. Or you can say, Lord, let me be the one to suffer it. Let my child not go through what I've gone through again. And God says, are you willing to be this savior for your family? And you say, Lord, I'm available. Are we together now? Please hear what I'm saying. Nobody will ever be coerced or manipulated in this ministry to bring one naira for anything to happen in the gospel. No, 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 no. It will be wicked. And only a wicked man of God will continue to receive seeds from people and they continue to bless him and not be... This is, this is where, sincerely speaking, I have a little challenge with we men of God. 
We continue to receive and collect from people, but never empower them. It's wickedness. It's a scam. Do you know how available people will be when they are financially free? Financial freedom will help you know that there are not many things to be done in life. Most of the distraction is the pursuit for money. It is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow but he gives his beloved sleep. It's impossible to, pay, to pray three, four, five hours every day when your pocket is crying. It's not true. Not in this country. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is here. We cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua, Shekinah is here. Yahweh, Yahweh. Hey, 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 hey. Yahweh. creativity 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 that God will anoint people to be creative do new things or old things in new ways that you set a pace my brothers and my sisters let no man deceive you that there is poverty in Zaria no it's just that the avenue to find expression is smaller but there are opportunities beyond your imagination. Every day, millions of Naira continue to exchange hands in this city by only a few people. Creativity. Creativity is not in the realm of men. You don't get creativity through education. Creativity is of the spirit. There is a spirit in man. What were you filled with the Holy Ghost for? There is a spirit in man. Jesus revealed a new way of saving men. Until then we use the blood of bulls. But Jesus came and showed us that the price can be paid once and for all. Never did they know that the Holy Ghost could come and stay on men. He would come and go. But a new thing came. He said, behold, I do a new thing. Remember not the former things. Listen, the instrument of survival in our generation today will be the spirit of creativity. The grace for uncommon inventions. I'm telling you this. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. Noah warned, just like I'm warning. And told them the rain is coming. I tell you, there is a financial holocaust that is hitting people. The Bible says it. That the earth of men will be brass and under will be iron. But there are people who will be preserved. A remnant that will be preserved. I came out this morning. I usually don't come out. And I decided to just come out in the afternoon. I didn't know it was this hot. When I came out and the, way, the, the sun, it was so serious. I just stood and I looked. I said, my God. And I said, this is my message, oh Lord. This is exactly what is going to happen to people. Think of what happens when you stand in the sun for long. Headache, pain. Yet there are people who will have to be exposed to those things. And do you know the pain? When you hold all your children together and say, Junior, stand in this sun with me. And Junior is saying, is this how life was meant to be? And Satan now looks at him and says, Junior, come. There is a way out. And Gino says, Daddy, since you cannot provide, you are not a father. Our children will be more audacious than us. Their generation has made them audacious. So if you are a father, you have to be a father indeed. A mother indeed. Otherwise, we will lose our children. 
and the law courts have been empowered to make sure you cannot take care of the child they say let's take care of your child meaning whatever we teach him provided we are the ones feeding him no government will feed my child in the name of jesus no no i reject it koinonia will never stand in front of any government office waiting to receive welfare at the expense of the gospel at the expense of the truth but this will be a blind foolish boast until you understand the power of creativity listen very carefully god is teaching us something tonight that will save us exposure creativity the mind that thinks the mind that works spirit inspired mind the mind that can bet solutions from the realm of the spirit bet solutions i was sharing with someone this afternoon of a woman that used to make i don't know what she makes now five hundred thousand in abuja here jobs did not come and everything did not come and she was praying and god gave her an idea and she went and met certain families that she can teach their children well and she's not doing a general extra moral lesson it's a vip extra moral lesson and it started like two children three children right in her house and those students were behaving exceptionally well but more than that she was teaching them character character and then she would play koinonia messages too these children were changing in remarkable ways and the parents started recommending their circle of influence that's always what happens when you penetrate one circle they will call the others like them to you and like play like play this woman would collect ten thousand naira per month as at the time that i was talking with her she had like 50 children only god knows how much she has now the gates of destiny will not open on its own you force it he said right from the days of john the baptist and until now the kingdom suffered violence and is the violence that will take it by force the spirit of invention listen to me if you stay with the holy spirit and say lord let something from the throne room come upon my mind for my generation god can put something on your mind something on your mind and change your life change your life i saw a picture on the internet one day the person's cloth they wrote 400 dollars then his his tie they wrote 20 dollars and then his head they wrote zero dollars are we together that's a picture of our generation packaging and there is nothing from the realm of the spirit and i told you that resources only follow productivity is god blessing us i'm already very proud and happy about many of us that god is granting grace not just to hustle but to think this this praying in tongues must translate into blessing everything up it's not only power to shake no it must come upon your mind please lay your heart on your head in the next two three minutes and i'd like you to pray and say lord let something come from heaven Zakatoske parakata from heaven, oh God. A creative idea from the throne room that I will have the boldness and the courage to execute that will change my life. Please pray. Please pray. Shabra sasiata. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Creativity. Everybody writes books, but there is a way that God can anoint you to write one book in a certain way. And that book will bless people's creativity. 
Koinonia messages today are blessing people because of the power of creativity. God gave an instruction and said, while people, the regular way is to have message stands at the end of a service and come and pick up. And God says, no, I will do it differently. Don't sell the teachings. I'm not saying selling teachings are wrong. But he said, just put them on, on Facebook and the angel of the Lord will take them to nations. That one creative idea. There are ladies here, you can have a creative idea. Listen, when you solve the problem of kings, you will eat with them. You solve, you will eat with whatever level. Whoever's level you solve their problem, that's the, the realm you will eat at. Listen, there are some of you here, God can anoint you and put grace on you. You will design clothes that will, the person who will call you to surprise you. You will just hear a call and they will say, who is this? You say, come. Are you the one who brought this design? Come. It's not about many customers. It's about quality people. There are men that represent nations. Listen, listen. I want you to start solving the problem of kings. You have done well to solve the problem of mean men. That God will empower you to solve the problem of kings. 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 Gentiles have already come to your light. It's time for their kings to come. Their kings to come. Is it not in the Bible that kings will entreat your favor? Kings. Kings. That God will put something on your mind. On your mind. Grace. I heard about somebody. Please sit down. We'll soon pray. Sit down. I heard about a gentleman. True story. And I was sharing it with someone this afternoon. He sat down and this guy was going through a lot of pain. And he kept praying and crying before God. And the next thing he saw a mowing machine. Machine that cuts grasses. And he had some little savings. And he went and bought it. When he bought it, he went to knock the gate of a very wealthy man who has a big land. And say, sir, I'm a young man. I'm a graduate. It's just that I didn't have um, any, you know, no employment. And I just bought a machine. I know that there are young boys that cut grasses, but my machine, I can mow it down and then pack everything. And the man looked at him and laughed and said, I'm impressed. These are the kind of men I want. You're welcome. Come in. And he came in and mowed the man's grasses. He was so well. And he told him that not only the grasses, I can also trim the flowers. Listen, the person I'm telling you today is a millionaire. He deals in everything that has to do with it. He bought these machines. They mow houses for wealthy people and then they sell flowers flowers they to the point that he even imports certain varieties from a crying graduate to a praying one and something comes from heaven and changes your life for as long as we sit down and continue to tell ourselves one day it go better my brothers and my sisters let me tell you you will find out that time is going and the only thing increasing in your life is your age. Are we together? I know a woman, a dear precious woman in Lagos. Every time I have the privilege to go there and around that ministry, I'm very quick to order her, her products, health drinks, completely organic 100 percent, because the need to live long and live healthy you see when you are poor is not a concern because the work you do will not even allow fats to remain in your body and all of this but by the time god helps you small you find out that at a level is a serious concern and this this woman started selling health drinks and you know beautifully packaged and only God knows how much she makes. There's a lady from Joss, a precious lady. She may be listening now. She came for Koinonia here with a product. She worked for somebody and came and God gave her ideas, a combination for weight loss, healthy, organic weight loss products that is cheaper and affordable, 100% organic. And that lady blessed. I saw it. I was so impressed. When I went to Joss, I told the lady, I said, put it and take it and go and give my parents let them take it and let them be blessed 
the goal is not far from you when the spirit of creativity comes on you you will see what others don't see it's true anything can bless it depends on how it is served are we together there's one mama that sells kunu kunu sorry for those of you who are not in the north is a drink a local you know drink that we take a lot here I tell you there's a woman that sells that and the way she does it even you know sometimes you just want to get all of these things and she can supply you whether a gallon or whatever it is please my brothers and my sisters lay your hand on your head again and command creativity to work for you rebuke laziness rebuke excuses there has to be a way out of it the warfare that is executed through creativity only creative men can survive upon that mountain there is a way out there is a way out there has to be a way out of struggling hallelujah please sit down let me tie it up somewhere so that we'll round up for tonight creativity creativity the third key to productivity one is exposure two is creativity and innovation number three is competence you want to be productive the third key is competence the ability to standardize your results hmm. competence the ability to standardize your results, maintain quality, predictable quality. Predictable quality. Anything that comes from you has a predictable expectation. I know if you're a lesson teacher, I already know what a child will get because you are there. If you are a chef, I already know. The food cannot be delicious today and nonsense tomorrow. You are not competent. Competent is a product of mastery. The mastery of the laws that govern that operation. Predictable competence. Listen to me. When your results are not standardized, kings will not come to you. Kings do not come to a fluctuated result. Stability for kings mean mastery. So when you stabilize and standardize your results, whether spiritually, intellectually, or otherwise, you call the attention of kings. The leaders in any industry are men who have standardized their results. You cannot keep fluctuating forever. As a man of God, as a businessman, as a career person, there must be a level of standardized results. Everybody say competence. Be strict on yourself. Set a high standard on yourself. Don't celebrate mediocrity. Just because you do something small, challenge yourself. Think global, think global, think global. You can start small, but let your mind be global. Are we together? I was listening to one of Dr. Miles Munro's mentees and he was sharing a story that when Dr. Miles was alive, he looked at him one day and he called his name and he says, young man, you have a fabulous grace. You are charismatic, but you are not, you are not vocal and articulate. And if you want to go into the communications industry, you have to be vocal and articulate. The gentleman came from a background of all these yo-yo boys. And so they just speak slangs all around. And he said, no, if you want to talk to presidents and talk to great people, you want them to call your attention, then you must pay the price to learn. And he says, wow, he was touched. And he made up his mind that he was going to take an extra program to work on himself. He went that far. And that gentleman today, is the one who heads Miles Monroe's church, Dr. Burroughs. He made up his mind that he was going to develop himself. Learn to delay gratification 
and insist until you are competent. Don't wear tomorrow's clothes today. You will walk naked tomorrow. Don't eat tomorrow's food today. You will die of hunger tomorrow. Don't be ashamed of rising gradually. But insist. Insist. I got to find out that a number of our precious ladies here are fashion designers. And for one of them, when I got to see what she does, I was blown away. I was, I was, so, I was impressed beyond imagination. I said, you mean you do this? She said, yes. I said, no, if this is what you do, then the sky is your limit. The world needs to know that you do this. Listen, let me tell you, when you are competent, don't be afraid to let the world know that I am here. You bring embarrassment to yourself and all those who are connected to you when you have not done your assignment and then you are calling the attention of the world. The fig tree had no fruit, but it was calling the attention of Jesus. When Jesus came hungry, he cursed it. That's what will happen to any man that calls the attention of the world when you are not ready. But when you are ready and you've done your homework, please stand tall and tell the world that with all humility, God has put something here. Come and see. That's why we boldly open up and we tell people, God is doing something great in Zaria. Come and see. When I travel by the grace of God to go for ministrations, I go with confidence. I know that the people will never be the same. Because the message is powerful and there is grace that backs the message. There's nothing the devil will do about it forever. That's why I continue to train and challenge you. My brothers and my sisters, when you become competent, the kings of Zaria will call you. When you become competent, you can be in Zaria and the kings of Abuja will call you. The kings of everywhere will call you. They have not called you because they are still studying you. And they are noticing the fluctuations around your results. Standardize your results and watch the desperation of kings. Is God speaking to us? Be competent. Don't be small. Oh, I'm a chef. I'm a chef. What do you do? Just because you can eat your food does not mean that's the food of kings. Challenge yourself. Are we together now? One time, a great man was celebrating his birthday and they just thought to make him a nice cloth and my tailor was called upon and told to sew for that man a very very big and wealthy man and then he was encouraged to do a good job and I'm sure he may be listening now and when he sewed the clothes for that man from that time that man started calling him. Now he asked him, I heard recently again, to make another set of clothes. Let me tell you, competence is addictive. When people meet competent people, they don't easily let them go. No, there are not many competent people in the world. You can only complain for a while, you will come back. Be so competent that you become an endangered species. I remember years ago, a dear woman was getting married in Zaria and she went to bring in a, uh, what they call these people that, makeup artist from Kano. And I asked a question. I said, does that mean there is not one of my dear people here that is an exceptional makeup artist who will like you to ruin her face on her wedding day? The wedding day is not the day of trial and error. If you are not competent, provable competence, Kings and queens will not call you. Listen, when you become competent, you can name your price. And the world will still say thank you. Is God blessing you? Competence. You need to shake off poverty. Don't just sit down and say, oh God, um, now that the job is not coming or what I read. No. God is giving you a mind that can sit down. Listen, koinonia. 
I told you that I will never pastor a people who are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit but poor and broke and mediocre. I will not be that man of God. For as long as you are under this grace, you must be balanced and that includes your finances. I trust God for times when by the grace of God, your children can come and at age 10, they are happy. They are focusing on matters of destiny. You are not waiting for them to become 18 years fast so that they will marry and come and pay you back. This is the place of encounter. That's what God is doing in your life tonight. This is the place of surrender. Do to me what you want. This is the place where your life is changed do to me what you want listen some of us our parents may have failed but turn them into a success by being successful so that they can say my assignment was to give birth to you and since i gave birth to you i may have failed in every other thing but because you arrived successfully your success has turned me back to a success The mother of Jabez called him Jabez because of sorrow. I don't know what else she called him when he, become, he became an honorable man. There are names that are given to you when you are blessed. Your parents will find names and coin names that represent the excitement you have created in their spirits. Are we together? Being in Zaria is not a curse. Being in the north is not a curse. Being a Nigerian is not a curse. And the secret is not running to Canada. The secret is not running to Europe. There are people under bridges in all of these nations. It is the grace that follows you and the intelligence that God gives you. Are we together? By the time we are building our international headquarters, these are, there are people here that will single-handedly by the spirit of God say apostle look we are writing this let this not be an issue not moral support no that people are here who will be so blessed and sign a million bibles and say please take them to the northeast noiseless impact are we together now there are many of our children in this ministry some of them you see them come and many of them is only God that supplies for their daily bread and is only God that takes care of them. When will God bless you to a point that one day you look at one child and say, young man, you were about to fall but because I came. Ah, I am a life that was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so glad you came. You know your impact by what people do around your birthdays. That you have to remind people that it's your birthday is a sign that your destiny is closed. People should be excited and know that my God, this blessing to my life, what an opportunity to celebrate him. There are people today, you still look at their grave and their grave is a salmon. You can stand on their grave and live inspired. He came, he saw, he conquered. Productivity. The ability to trust God for an innovative spirit. Listen, turn your ideas to products and services. You are only worthy of reward when your ideas become products and services. Served with excellence until they become products and services, you are only worthy of commendation, not reward. I cook once in a while. I'm very good, but that's just how I am. Hey, 
that means that the financial squalor that is coming will meet up with you. I don't know what the best restaurant in this city is. I don't know. But I thank God that there are people rising already. Here and there. It is my goal and my prayer that the best of the best of the best of the best of every level of productivity will come out from this house. It's not in a competitive manner. Listen, one of the benefits of productivity is the privilege of influence. The moment you are productive and you lead a field, you are given grace to mentor, to build, to set the rules that guide the understanding of other people. And this is one of the keys to kingdom advance. You never become influential as a mediocre. It is when you, when you set the standard and you lead the field. Are we together? You must challenge yourself. I vowed a vow to myself while preparing for this meeting. I said, Apostle, you have not started. Oh, you have not started. The trickles of results that God has given, praise God for it. But Mr. Man, it's time to get to gear two and do something higher and greater. It is time for a certain levels of graces. I was praying and I said, Lord, give me the anointing for three diseases. One, cancer. Two, HIV. We have seen it in pockets, but I mean that a signature upon your life. This is what money cannot buy. Lord, grant that grace. Let it not be by mistake again. I don't want people to come and testify and say I was healed of cancer. Apostle laid hands and I said, I'm not even sure. No. I want a realm where we know that you came here and we can smile and say, Mr. Man, dust your vision. Put your books back in order because you are walking away free. There is a grace. It's not out of jealousy or a need. No, 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 no. It is how you become a blessing. And then kings will come to you and say, our money means nothing in the face of this situation. And you tell them, there is a system in this kingdom that can help men. The little grace that God has given me, I am blessed and humbled as I see it change the lives of people. When people come with situations that I know are within the grace that God has given me, I'm excited. I, I feel happy for them because I know they are coming back with a testimony. If that does not happen to you, what kind of man of God do you want to become? When you become a conventional man of God, you will be a competitive man of God, a jealous man of God, an angry man of God, and eventually a backsliding man of God. But there is a height, an exceeding high mountain where God keeps you. And from that mountain, you can tell people, look at what Jesus can do. Say, don't mention Jesus. Say, that's all I know. And they say, if we drive him, we're in trouble. So we have to leave you there. And you shout it at the rooftop. We raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We sing in honor of you. That's the anthem of our generation. Productivity, the ability to be useful, the ability to be needed, the ability to force a space for yourself for the sake of the kingdom in the table of destiny. You may not have been born with that privilege, but my brother and my sister, let me tell you this. There are men and women who did not have any advantage 
but they made up their minds that they will challenge themselves that out of Zaria God will spring forth something that will shift this nation men and women who defy unemployment men and women who defy mediocrity and your productivity will open the gates and the king of Tyre will watch you and you will pass and sit on that mountain and call forth nations to come and they will come listen to me we are going to have a few minutes to pray and just where you are I'd like you to pray are we together now worship team just give us just play something for us and then you pray you are going to cry for your destiny tonight's prayer you are not interceding for anybody you are saying Lord there has to be something uncommon in my life I'm tired of mediocrity I'm tired of having what everybody has it is the reason for jealousy it is the reason for envy Lord put something upon my life something uncommon are you ready to pray expose my mind grant me the grace to be creative grant me the grace to be competent the earnest expectation of creation awaited the manifestation of sons no excuse for poverty no excuse for failure no excuse for mediocrity lord i cancel those excuses tonight i cancel those excuses i cancel those excuses i have a mind that thinks i have a spirit that can think there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty can make men of understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. I want you to cause the spirit of laziness. Laziness. Physical laziness. Mental laziness. Whatever will be, will be. I'd like you to receive the spirit of aggressive pursuit. Aggressive pursuit. One door closes, you force another one to open. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I'm tired of giving excuses. Outside, pray. Inside, pray. Those following online, pray. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Ala baranda skabaraka to shebre degetas. Lekete parusa segete marakata. Embrakata barato soto preketesh. Sabrende segete leva karyada vos. Rakata baba kata paranda sana bakatosh. Eprekete nekete parato satekete. Rekete kete kete balada bosh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. We are praying. Two more prayer points and we are done. I believe in diversification but I also believe in mastery you are going to pray Lord what is that one thing the area you want me to be a master in incontestable unarguable reveal to me lift your voice and pray Lord is it agriculture Lord is it finance is it in my career 
Is it in the academia? I cry for the spirit of revelation. Show me, oh God, the one thing that will set me apart and bring honor to your name through my life. Please pray. Concentrate and pray. Concentrate and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look up, please. One book that was written by T.D. Jakes, Woman Thou Art Loose, one idea from heaven, he wrote that book and it changed his life and set precedence for a conference that is one of the premier world conferences today for women. One book, Purpose Driven Life, that a man wrote, changed and turned his life around. One idea called Uber in an app that was invented far away from Africa is working like fire here in Africa. What if God gives you the cure for AIDS? What if, do you know that I found out that there is no sickness on earth now that does not have a medical cure? I mean that has been found. HIV is not incurable. I mean medically. I, I'm not pleased with due respect to the medical council and all the medical people. These are my personal opinions. I'm not speaking on behalf of the ministry. No, am I speaking on behalf of the nation? I'm telling you by spiritual revelation and by intelligence that there is a cure for it. There is a cure for cancer. There is a cure for all these things. The only problem is that those who have found the cure have not learned the systems and because you belong to a harsh world and a harsh environment that this, most of these things were in many respects intentionally manipulated to victimize Africa. So an individual that rises like that will be fought over. But there are cures. Not one, not two. I have spoken personally with people that have these cures. Let me tell you sincerely. Are you ready to pray? Lord, that one thing that you put upon my life that will take the sorrow of lack and want forever that I can leave something for my children's children. Please pray. The last prayer point and we're done for tonight take my eyes to the problem that holds my wealth take my eyes don't run away from problems take my eyes show me oh god in life and destiny where is the problem show me the goliath that my throne is connected to i'm not afraid to face that goliath it may take time but i will prevail lift your eyes and pray lift your voice and pray Lord, take my eyes, take my mind, take me to the problem, the issue that I can solve, that will bring me into my financial Sabbath, that will take my family out of a realm of obscurity and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I shared with you, listen, I shared with you some time here about a dear man of God who was going to pray for me. I, you know, just went, sowed a seed into his life and then he looked at me and it was time for him to pray for me. And he said, Oh God, create a problem that only him can solve. You know, I stood there with my heart that is for the body of Christ. I said, I don't know if I like this kind of prayer. I mean, I don't like things that try to outshine people. I'm not that kind of person. And so what kind of prayer is this? But the man had prayed his prayer. But when I sat down and I thought about it, I knew that he was not speaking from a standpoint of jealousy. Listen to me. Your similarity, Mike Modok says, creates your comfort. It is your difference and your uniqueness that creates your reward. Nobody will pay you for being like another person. They will only reward you for being unique. There can be 20 of you in a city, but you can stand out. The same way there are millions of men of God across the earth, but there can be a unique imprint of God's grace upon your life. Are we together now? I decree in the name of Jesus Christ, the grace that wakes people up in the night and shows them witty inventions may that grace rest upon you let me pray it again the grace that wakes people then the secret was revealed to Daniel in the night then the secret there is a grace that taps men in the night and say wake up your destiny is about to rise may that grace speak over your life listen to me I decree and declare that every fear of failure whatever is keeping you down People will laugh at me if I fail. How can I take this step? I curse that spirit in the name of Jesus. For those of you honestly trusting God for capital, that you know that you have sincerely done your homework, you just need that push. I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I declare, in a way you cannot explain, I channel resources to you. I channel resources from the ministry of destiny helpers. I channel strength resources to you in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, your lifting will require a networking of like minds. I connect you to similar minds in the name of Jesus Christ. There are some of you, you are already doing great things, but you just need the courage to scale up to a level that becomes enviable. Both the courage and the grace, I release it upon you now. Listen, there are some of you, God is calling to dimensions that people fear going there. Because nobody has gone there and succeeded. I exempt you and I declare you will succeed. For some of you, this innovation will come in dreams. You will lie down to sleep and your whole sleep will be a dream. You will wake up and do exactly what you saw and prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare that from tonight. That between now and next week. That everybody under the sound of my voice here must find an area in his life where you can channel energy to be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ and let me pray finally your soul will never go down because of money your work with God your passion for the things of God your sense of honor your sense of submission your, your sense of recognition of the authority of God 
will never deplete while you rise in the name of Jesus thank you Lord Jesus thank you Lord Jesus let me tell you you are going to hear touching testimonies from this prayer that I've prayed it's true give Jesus praise Father we bless you in the name of Jesus Christ please if you can't stand on your feet everyone inside and outside if you can please be upstanding on your feet I want to pray for people who came here some from within this town and some from outside this town and you're saying apostle I have never truly made a commitment for Jesus Christ I've heard the things that you have said I may not have come from a family that loved the Lord but I sense from your teaching that God is separating me because he wants me to be a savior and a deliverer whether you are in overflow one two three or the main auditorium here you've seen what God has done you've heard the word and you've known that it's not just about money and influence but it's about the soul of men and the purposes of the kingdom wherever you are you're giving your heart to Jesus for the first time or you are saying apostle I just want to rededicate my life I know that I need Jesus please wherever you are except for overflow three because of time, I may request that you just move to the front of your projector stand. But overflow one, two, three. Run like there's fire on the mountain and make your way to the front here. I will want to lead you to Jesus. Quickly, one. I'll just count one to five and we're done. This is an issue of destiny. Two. Please clear the way for them as they come. Please be upstanding. Be upstanding because of space. Thank you. Please be upstanding. Three. Are you still coming? Win that war tonight make up your mind that i don't want my life to continue like this jesus is calling you rebels don't don't come to god they run away from him so that you're on your way coming to jesus is a sign that you're not a rebel it doesn't matter what you have done or you have not done if you come to jesus he will in no wise cast away overflow two are you coming quickly quickly make your way to the front Those online following us from whatever nation of the world, you can connect. Making this prayer from the depth of your heart, you're not reciting a poem. I still believe there are a few more people that need to come. Please hurry up, our time is gone. Let tonight be the night of destiny. Let tonight be the night of destiny. No one will force you, no one will beat you, no one will stop you. But you know it by the spirit that God is calling you. And you know that this is a kairos moment it's a defining moment for your life please make your way quickly make your way quickly hallelujah i want to th celebrate and thank all of you who summoned the courage to come here those at overflow three and the thousands of people scattered around around the nations of the earth making this decision i want you to know that this is a real decision you're not just reciting or chanting a poem Jesus is here and he's ready to give you a new beginning. Are we together? Please raise your right hand and I want to say, to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart and I believe that you are the son of God. This night, I have heard your word and I declare that from tonight and forever, you are my Lord you are my savior. I receive the abundance of grace, the gift of righteousness, and the life of God. From today, I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus. Keep your hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for these precious, precious people you have brought by your spirit to yourself. You have called them because you want to give them new beginnings from tonight and i pray in the name of jesus that you will protect and preserve them that they will continue to go from glory to glory loving you and serving the purposes of your kingdom lord i pray by extension over the thousands and probably millions of people around the world who are listening right now and will be listening i pray in the name of jesus that this prayer that they make 
let it translate into their salvation in the name of Jesus I bless you I pray that the keeping grace rests upon you in the name of Jesus Christ I pray amen and amen God bless you now please I want you to follow there's a gentleman waving his hands all of you please in concert just follow this gentleman they'll lead you to a group of people and they will just give you a few information and direct you afterwards praise the Lord dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye